we are from the U of A nursing program and we have been working with Pima County Health, Health Department <laughs> and we were trying to figure out like what we wanted to come here and talk to you guys because when we came here we were immediately drawn to you guys and we wanted to kind of bring something that we thought would be helpful and not just come and show up and then we got to meet the people from Arizona Poison and Drug Center and we were like this might be something helpful and useful and hopefully we can give you guys some information that you didn't already know and use it, okay? <laughs> but before right. we get begin, a little disclaimer, we are not poison control experts. No. Um, so we're presenting you the information that we received from them. And so we're gonna kind of talk to you guys some, about some of these beautiful creatures. These are that all that common see. creatures that and plants that are found in Arizona and in Tucson. So we wanted to make it relevant to you guys and yeah. things that you might actually encounter one day. Hopefully not, but you never know. <laughs> if you encounter, you know what to do. Yeah. <laughs> so we have just a few little brief facts about each of these animals. I'm sorry it's not the best setup, but we have some photos that we'll pass around too. So we'll just go over really briefly. So this first one at the top, the Gila monster, very common in Arizona. Has anybody ever seen one? Wow, so, yeah, yeah, I've never actually seen one, but <laughs> I've very dangerous. For 30 years and I've only seen one. Has like, anybody been oh, bitten by one? Wow. <laughs> they, when they enough. bite, they latch onto your arm like really hard and it can be really hard to get off. And actually something interesting about these animals is they're protected oh. by our state. So it is illegal to kill one of them or cause harm to one of them. So if you get bitten by one, um, they recommend trying to pull it off yourself, trying to like yeah, pry its jaws open with a stick or something. And, yeah. <laughs> and the best thing you can do is put it on the ground so its feet has something solid to to press against so they feel safe. And that's probably the best way to get them or off. Or but if you can't, drug, just go straight to the hospital with them. But you can always call poison control and they'll tell you just go right to the hospital with healing monsters if they bite you. So they're basically biting them because they're scared. Yeah, yeah. So now that like, usually they won't bite unless you're poking at them or bugging them and stuff like that. So if you see one, just kind of leave them alone, alone and they'll back leave away. And yeah, and I'm sure we've all seen the Africanized bees once, twice maybe, because these are really, really vicious bees. What the problem with these bees is, and we were kind of learning about it is in Brazil, they wanted to make these like ultimate bees to create more honey. And so what they did was they looked at the, a couple of bees in Europe, and then they looked at the African bees and they were like, oh, perfect. This one produces more honey. This one, you know, doesn't take that much of whatever. And they brought these two bees together. And what they actually did was create the ultimate uh, killer. killer bee. The part that we wanted to, to, say is like you can easily just say hey my buddy just got stunned this is these are his symptoms what should we do usually unless you're allergic um you'll get the redness the pain the swelling and stuff like that if you did yes and usually though if you have any trouble breathing at all that's a sign that you're allergic and just call 911 like yeah. skip them and call 911 because they'll just tell you that so just a little bit about brown spiders they're usually non-aggressive and they're usually found in closets, wood piles, and under sinks. But what happens most often is when people get bitten by these creatures, it's usually when they put on a piece of clothing that's been in the closet, because what they'll do is they'll lay in, in between the folds, like when you fold clothes. So that's usually when people get bitten, and then one of its defining marks is this violin shaped on it's, it's, it's a brown recluse pretty right? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's like cousin. its cousin. Oh, okay. It's usually mistaken for the brown recluse, but they're essentially very similar. They have right? Yeah. They might, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. Very related. <laughs> Those are the weirdest really things. Related. And then just its size, it's not that big, it's maybe the size of a nickel. This Mm. So if you guys are folding clothes in there, yeah. be careful. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, that is yeah. where they like to go. So next up, we have the rattlesnake. So if you live oh, in Arizona, odds are you've seen a rattlesnake in your life and you know that when they start shaking the rattle, that's your cue to <laughs> run away. <laughs> but they don't always shake their rattle before they're about to strike. So if you see one at all, just leave the them alone, don't help. bug them. Yeah, yeah their bites are very venomous. Um, so they will send you to the hospital right away. And there are all kinds of myths about different first aid treatment options that people do, like sucking out the venom don't. or putting ice on it. <laughs> but they say don't do any of that and just call 911 and 
you know, get to the well, hospital as soon as you can. Now. And they do have anti-venom available. So oh, next up, yeah. we have the tarantula, which we have a lovely photo for you. It's about to go around. Um, <laughs> so these are pretty common in Arizona. We call them the gentle it. giant because usually people can, you know, hold them and play with them and have them as yeah. pets. And it's not too much of a concern. But when they do get startled, they are more likely to bite you. And their bite is very painful. And if they are really scared, they can't even release the little hairs from their back, uh, which can attach to your skin and cause a lot of irritation. And, and paralysis. And, and you know, temporary oh, wow. paralysis really. if really severe. But um, what, what is that? usually they recommend just kind of washing this, you know, washing the bite off of soap and water and contact poison control. And if you have any concerns about your symptoms, um, seek medical attention. Okay, so next up is the Black Widow. And they're pretty I mean, common. The the women are more dangerous than the male spiders and that one of their defining marks is of course the red hourglass shape that they have on them. So I have the beautiful Sonoran desert toad. <laughs> and I did get to hold that yesterday or whatever day that was, which was really cool. You got to hold it? Yeah, because um, at the uh, poison control, there's uh, in our uh, pharmacy, there's a lady that actually works with poison control and they have, I think it's a rattlesnake, the bark scorpion, the toad, black widow. and the black widow. And so she's like, do you guys want to hold a toad? All of them, I'm just going to let you know, said no, because they were scared. <laughs> 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 it's the, the secretions that are poison, that's toxic, yes. right? Yes. Those, those yes. And they yes. have like their glands yes. so, in the front and the back. Yeah, so like if you look at these little pockets yeah, here, <laughs> yeah. we actually have one, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> but these glands right here, these little lumps, they just kind of get secreted on the skin. So it's, and this is more for your dogs. And what happens is your dogs tend to want to like lick them and play with them. And so they're getting the poison on their tongue. And we, usually what they say is to just rinse the dog's mouth out with water. And they also were saying that um, when you leave out the water so that they can drink it, try to keep it low so that the dog kind of drinks it and you can keep filling it up because sometimes the toad sits in there and then all of its secretions are kind of getting into the water. Do you have to wash your hands? Yes, yes. always, always. If, but if you touch them, it doesn't... As long as you don't put it in your eyes. Eyes, mouth. So the Arizona coral snake, um, Sorry, there's actually another snake. Is it the king snake? The king snake. King that king looks yeah. very similar, but I have a little bit, a little rhyme for you to yeah. remember. Um, where did they go? Oh, did we go? Red and yellow kill a fellow. Yes, yeah. Red and black yeah, friends, Jack. Yeah. Yes, so that's the pattern to distinguish them from their harmless friends. Um, so these are very, very poisonous. So go to the hospital as soon as you get bit. But they actually don't bite that often. So I think the occurrence of bites is like really, really low. It's something with the way that their teeth are in their um, their jaw. It's like really hard for them to get a bite in. They have little fangs, yeah. They have little fangs, yeah. So. Just go to the hospital if you ever get bit by a coral snake. Well, like so next up, the scorpion. Everybody has seen scorpions? Oh, yes. yes. I've been on Tucson for four years and I have never seen a scorpion really? down here, but... I anyways, guarantee you we can go find one right yeah. here. <laughs> <laughs> so there are a lot of different, different species of scorpions, but only one is poisonous, um, and that's the bark scorpion. And they're really, really tiny. So you see this picture is next to a quarter, so it's about that size. And I think the way you tell them apart from other scorpions is that their <coughs> legs and their stinger is really really thin and like a lot more narrow than the other ones. So these are mostly dangerous in young children and maybe older adults. Um, if you're a young healthy adult mostly like you'll be okay but um, it's like like a bee sting. Yeah if, but if you're having any weird symptoms then that might be a sign that you want to get medical treatment but if you get stung by one and you want to call poison control if you're having any symptoms and ask them if these are serious or common symptoms That'll be information that they should be able to provide you with. And it's the baby ones that carry more poison mm -hmm. than the adult ones also, right? And that's it's true also that about the snakes. The rattlesnakes. I thought they just can't it's control they, how they, much. Exactly, the, yeah, exactly. They have the same amount, they just can't control how much, how much they, they give you. Eat at all, right? Whereas the adult yeah. knows that they're not going to eat for a while if they give inject all of it so they it will pull back the amount of venom that comes out. The last creepy critter we have <laughs> is a centipede. These I can be really too. long and they're Shiny really video. nasty they're looking to me. Uh, um, but <laughs> usually their bites, the they're very painful, but they're usually not going to be harmful to you. So, But again, if you have any weird or strange 
symptoms, you know, call poison control, ask them about them, and they may advise you to seek what medical help. What a crazy help. looking bug. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> The medication identification or symptoms after taking the medication. Like I think one of the examples she said was a guy didn't remember that he took his medication, took some more heart medication, and then started freaking out. He called and they told him what to do. So it's like, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. But that happened to my mom. Um, actually, I have twin boys, mm -hmm. and uh, when they first came home from the hospital, they were on a medication. Uh, for um, their apnea bradycardia. So she had given one his medication, but then couldn't re didn't remember which one she had given it to, so she gave it to him again. And it was basically just caffeine. Right. So, but she freaked out. She took him to the hospital, and she could have just like called, just called, called poison, control, poison control, and they would have told her what to do. Yeah. Yeah, and it just and also saves because you know sometimes, especially when you start dealing with children. People like say, you know what? I'm just gonna call and deal with the expenses later because yeah. I don't know what's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. Well, that kind of helps save you some time and money. In fact, she was giving us all these facts about how much they save with um, hospital stays or ambulance rides because mm -hmm. they just will just tell you, don't, yes, that sounds dangerous, go. Yeah. So it's really a good checkpoint, in between point. Yeah. And then I'm sure you guys know about these a little bit, the Carolina Gents. The ginseng weed. I don't know which, any. No. <laughs> I remember the ginseng weed. They said people were trying to smoke those seeds okay. and they were getting yeah, they were killing yeah. themselves. Yeah, I'm put it behind my ear. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Weird. I remember back then they like called the witch flower. Oh, yeah, I've seen that ginseng weed. Yeah, people were smoking the seeds from that thing and they were getting, yeah. they get high, but they yeah, also yeah. die yeah. afterwards. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. 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 It's a poison. Yeah. 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 I remember reading about that in the newspaper a long time ago. I didn't know that these are these are poisonous. Yes, I had no idea. Yes, and that's candelabra cactus. We kind of there was just like a whole bunch of information on. Them, but the, the the point of what we wanted to just say is don't smoke them, don't use this MS tea, because a lot of people will like, oh, this is free tea, and and no, just no in the mouth, no, nothing, just leave them. They're beautiful. Look at them, and that's it. The harm ranges from just a little uh, itchiness to hospitalization, even so just stay away from them and unfortunately i don't know i think we kept them in here or something but yeah don't we oh we left you with this to kind of give you guys an example of like some of the ones that because some people think that oh this is the jimson weed oh i can drink put it in my tea and no not a good idea don't do it no, no. so that so that's why we kind of brought those in because we just wanted to let you guys know that these are the ones that are actually harmful not helpful We're going to read a scenario here, it's really short, and then we're going to ask if you think that this person would be treated in the hospital or at home. So we'll just kind of raise a hand, just really simple, just to quiz you. So, sorry guys, now we're in school again. Now it's getting ridiculous, right? No. <laughs> so we have a 45-year-old was bitten by a centipede, this guy, okay, which caused the area to redden. Would he most likely be treated at home or at the hospital? Oh, hospital. So raise your hand if you think home. Home. What is his age? Hospital. Okay. So, hospital? Hospital. Okay, he's actually home. These guys most likely. <laughs> most likely home. And we would, we would still call. But, um, because these guys, they usually, I think you were saying that it's usually it's, just redness. It hurts really bad, but oh, usually they're not going to be any more harmful than just the pain of the sting and maybe some slight redness and swelling. And then the second one is a 20 year old was stung by a bee and has started to have difficulty breathing. Would he go home or stay at the hospital? Would he stay home or go to the hospital? Hospital. Hospital? Hospital. Home. I have a question. I'm going to let you participate. So a uh, 20 year old gets stung, 
by a bee and he starts having trouble breathing, would you take him to the hospital or keep him home? Yes. So like we said, that's a really bad sign if they start having a possible anaphylactic reaction. And then the third question is a 55 year old accidentally mistook his blood pressure medication for Advil and accidentally took four times the usual dose. His blood pressure medication, he is now short of breath and has blurry vision. Would he stay at home for this or go to the hospital? Hospital. 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 <laughs> yeah, <okay. laughs> hospital. yeah, and the key here is uh, the, time is up, yeah. the <laughs> symptoms are really severe. Like if you're short of breath and you know your vision starts getting blurry, that could signal like some serious medical issues going on. So they probably would treat you in the hospital for that. Start messing with your blood but if you're not sure if the dose that you took is dangerous or you'll be okay, that would be a good question to call poison control and ask them about. And then we have a 30 year old was bitten by a scorpion in the middle of the night. The area is red and numb. Would he most likely stay home or go to the hospital? Home. Home? Home? home. home? I'd go to the hospital. Why would you? <laughs> it's numb and it's red. <laughs> that doesn't sound good. He want, yeah, he'd rather right. be safe than sorry. Yes. Yeah. So, so who said home? Everybody else said home. I'm going to say home just because obviously if it got worse over time, then I would probably go to the hospital. The answer is home, correct? But see, in your case, instead of just rushing to the hospital, you would call poison control. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but for any scorpion bite, it is common <laughs> for the area to maybe get red and like tingle, maybe some slight numbness. Um, but more severe reactions would be like shortness of the breath, short, uh, or like eye twitching yeah. and kind of weird. Yes. Huh. See, if I see that, I might get shortness of breath because it's causing anxiety attacks. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're not sure, call poison yeah. control and tell them, you know, I just got bit by a scorpion. I don't know what kind it was. Um, the area is numb and I can't breathe. <laughs> then they'll kind of direct you further for that. A 40 year old was bitten by a rattlesnake, causing him extreme pain. Would he stay home or go to the hospital? Hospital. 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 Yes, yes. Yes. Always any rattle, the yeah. Any rattlesnake <laughs> bike, go to the hospital. Don't even call poison control. Yeah. Go to the hospital. You might be wasting valuable <laughs> time that you need. Yes. Yes. You want to just go to the hospital. Don't mess with it. Just go just to the go hospital. Go to the hospital. <laughs> Don't start sucking it out. None of that. Just go to the hospital. <laughs> Great presentation. Thank you. Feel free to grab any brochures or any information. We have magnets too, or more stickers. I'd like to get one of the brochures. Yeah, yeah come yeah. in. Yeah. Is there only one of the ones that are in the binder? Yeah, we're, we're just, we're just, just have, yeah. we'll leave one for the med tent, and Thank then if you, you want anything, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.